Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as now we are, you know, just about out of this extremely dead space. WNBA is at its all-star break right now. MLB is. None of the other sports are playing, but finally the MLB is going to come in to save us on that one as tomorrow they kick back off. And I want to look into some of the storylines to be on the lookout for the during the final few months of this season. I'm looking at... First, of course, the two biggest stars in the MLB in Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge, who both have chances to continue to, you know, build on their already incredible legacies. You look at Shohei Otani, we'll start with the fact that he is not pitching this season because he was dealing with an upper body injury that has prevented it. Elbow, I think it is. Maybe it's shoulder, but... He hasn't been pitching, so he has been just DHing, not playing in the field for the LA Dodgers, and he has a chance to win the MVP award as a designated hitter, which is just about unheard of in the MLB, and that's because he is just flat out one of the best offensive players we have ever seen, and on top of it, the fact that he is able to pitch, I mean, you know, I would be the last person to drone on to you about the greatness of Otani's legacy. There are other places you can go to to, you know, really get the overall historical impact of that. But Otani, you look at what he's been doing this year, a career high 316 batting average. He is uh, at 400 on base percentage, 635 in slugging, leading the MLB, and a 1.036 OPS, second straight year leading the MLB in that category. So, he is just an absolute unit, and I'm really, really excited to see him make, finally make the playoffs after years with the Angels and you know just having not that great of a team around him. We're finally get going to get to see him on the biggest stage. Another sort of t- tied in storyline to that is, are the Dodgers going to be able to get right from a health perspective? Mookie Betts, who I think was the front runner, betting wise, he was the front runner for the MVP award when he ended up getting hurt, injuring his wrist. So we'll see when he is able to come back. That starting pitching rotation has been just riddled with injuries up to this point. And, you know, the guys that have been available for them have largely been been struggling as we just saw Bobby Miller get um, demoted as well the the other week, the final week of the before the All Star break. So Dodgers, from a health perspective, I mean we know just how talented they are. I feel like even going back to last year's playoffs when they lost, it was in large part because of the fact that their starting pitchers were not healthy when they needed it the most. And, you know, they are still overcoming a lot of those same, some of them, the same injuries, but also when you have a Yoshino, Yoshinobu Yamamoto injury flare up and Tyler Glasnow, you just, you don't feel great about the health situation there. That's my number one concern with the Dodgers, but you know, regardless, Dodgers are going to be in the playoffs. I'm trying to see Shohei Otani play some postseason ball. So I'm really looking forward to that. But on the American League side, Aaron Judge has a chance to potentially break his own American League home run record. He had 62 home runs in 2022, and he has 34 so far through 98 games played for the Yankees. So he is very much on pace for, you know, potentially having another record breaking year in terms of home runs here. So. Have to keep an eye out for that as well. I have a comment here. There's a lot of talk about if NBA slash NFL could convert, do you think MLB could convert to the NFL? That's a fascinating question, actually, that um, I don't feel like it's been asked. I mean, I think the difference with the MLB is that it's just, it's very skill oriented and it takes you know, obviously tons of skills and you have players like Aaron Judge, even like Shohei Otani, um, that could athletically play. It's just, I don't know how well it would sort of cross over to the NFL. That's something that I definitely want to think on more. Cause like, I'm trying to think, 
you know, what would those guys even be necessarily? Like, Judge, I guess you probably put them at, like, a tight end. Like, the top, top end athletes, I feel like you could probably find a spot for in the NFL. I don't think it would be quite as applicable as basketball is, but you can probably come to a number of different athletes as well. Um, I'm from Massachusetts. My guy, Jaron Duran, feel like maybe with some of the speed guys as well, I mean, it's a similar concept of you find the open space and you go that I could see maybe like a Jaron Duran being some type of a wide receiver or running back. But that's a, I mean, Dur Duran's also absolutely got the legs for it as well. The way that he keeps those things churning when he's running, but it's a very interesting question actually, but um, sort of refocusing here a little bit, um, even though at, at this time in the sports calendar season, never opposed to some of those silly debates like that. But I think there's a couple division races I'm really looking at, the AL East and the NL West specifically. I think it's a three-team race in both of those divisions, the Orioles, Yankees, and Red Sox in the AL East, in the NL West probably having... I think, obviously, Brewers at number one. The Cardinals are in that race as well. And, or, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm getting ahead of myself here to the NL Central. The, the AL West, it is the Mariners at the top right now. The Astros closing in right behind them. And it is the Texas Rangers, who I personally am just refusing to quit on at this point in the season. I feel like if they get healthy, then they can get hot at the end of the season like they did last season. We'll see, though, because we're we're also hearing about the potential Nathan Avaldi trade rumors and some of the other guys that they could potentially look to shop this deadline. So if they end up selling, then scratch that. But until that happens, and I don't think the Rangers are going to sell the year after winning the World Series, but, you know, we'll see there. But as I was sort of jumping ahead to, I do also have my eyes on the NL Central. The Brewers have overachieved relative to preseason expectations, and they've gotten out to a very nice start where they are currently sitting at 55 and 42. The Cardinals, on the other hand, got out to a really bad start. They dug themselves into a hole, but they're back up over 500 at 50 and 46, four and a half games back of the Brewers. Um, still rocking that minus 38 point differential. So run differential, I should say. So they definitely have an opportunity to get hot and take down the Brewers, but I also could definitely see them missing the postseason altogether if they are sort of hanging around that wild card spot. And then do you think that the Pirates have enough to make this big time push? They're building up momentum, obviously, with Paul Skeens. Jared Jones is currently down for them right now. So I'm not really counting in the Pirates, but I more so just want to see them playing competitive basket, uh, playing competitive baseball through the end of the season. Um, and then additionally, which division leader has the best chance of not making the playoffs as well? Just sort of looking at that. I kind of feel like you have to go with the Seattle Mariners at this point. Um, the Orioles, they could very easily fall out of the division lead. I do think that they take it home in the AL East, but it's definitely on the table that the Yankees are able to pass them. It's a race with the Red Sox, but I don't see them jumping up to number one either. The guards have a little bit of a cushion against the Twins, but I wouldn't write that one down in pen either. And then in the National League, you have a seven and an eight and a half game lead with the West and the East. And then we just talked about the Central as well. So maybe you throw the Brewers into that conversation. I probably don't. I think that the Seattle Mariners could be in a lot of trouble. They have been, you know, I would say... They've been winning games, obviously. They're sitting at 52 and 46, but with just a 19, uh, 19, a plus 19 in the run differential, they strike out more than anybody else in baseball. They have an incredible pitching staff, but you know, knock on wood, if any of those players were to get hurt, I feel like you could be in a lot of trouble. Maybe you do see some type of a, uh, you know, burst of energy from a 
Julio Rodriguez, who was playing a little bit better, headed into the All-Star break. And you just have you have a lot of solid guys for the a lot of solid hitters for the Mariners, but kind of not living up to expectations. And that includes Julio Rodriguez for a lot of the year. But, you know, Ty France, JP Crawford, not having the years you were hoping from them. Mitch Garver as well, you can throw into that. So I would be worried about the Mariners. If there were any team leading a division right now that were to miss the playoffs, I would probably bet on the Mariners. And then personally, myself, selfishly, um, how serious are the Boston Red Sox going to take themselves in terms of the trade deadline? Because they are currently sitting in a posi position where they have a playoff spot right now. They are not just holding a playoff spot, but are in legitimate conversations for the AL East. Like I just said, I don't think they win it. But, you know, four and a half games back, you can at least conceive of a possibility that they end up taking that division from... You know, the teams ahead of them that they could maybe even finish second in the division would be a massive win for the Red Sox. But this is a front office who has been unwilling to take themselves seriously a little bit for a number of years. They've been doing this kind of BS of buying and selling at the trade deadline to try and convince Red Sox fans that they are serious about it, but when they're really not. But it sounds like the comments that have been made from Craig Breslow, their new president of baseball operations, that they are going to look to make moves. And that is, we'll see what that means necessarily. Is it an end of the rotation starter? Is it sort of a platoon right-handed bat? Anything could help, but it would be encouraging to see, especially as all of their youth talent is finally starting to have some success in the MLB that there should be prospects more expendable at this point. But let me know what you're looking forward to most in the second half of the season. We're going to be taking our final break here when we come back on the other side. It's Friday. It's segment five of the week. I wanted to run through the top five or the top 10 athletes that currently reside in Boston for the sports because we've seen a drastic changing of scenes with the Patriots kind of falling out of relevancy and the Celtics finally ending their drought since 2008 with a championship. So we're going to be diving into all of that. But first, a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. 